if you're new to my YouTube channel, please click that subscribe button and remember to click the bell icon to get notifications of all my uploads throughout the week. So today I'm going to have a quick play. I've got some watercolour cardstock. This is £140 or 300 GSM. I have a spritz water bottle that has some um, very, very clean water in. And I'm just going to spritz over. And I've already taped it down. So I have some brushos. So we're going to play a little bit with those today. So I'm going to sprinkle on some colour and just watch it do its thing in that background. So that is the yellow, which I think in the sheet is the golden yellow. And then we have lemon. So let's let that swirl too. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. Just let that sit there for a second or two and then I'm going to introduce the leaf green. Not much green in there, oh there it is, look at that. Let's just open that hole a bit bigger in there. It's amazing how much of that green comes out and you don't see it. <laughs> Let's just let that work. Do its magic. And then down towards the bottom, spritz a little bit more water, that's going to start rushing down. And I'm going to introduce some turquoise. I'm probably going to need to make the holes in these a little bit bigger. I'm not really getting that much colour out. That's probably going to do it. And then we'll spritz that again. Put the pin back in. And then I'm going to grab that golden yellow again. A tad more water up at the top. Just make the hole a little bit bigger. And then we'll see how that reacts. Now there is also in this set an orange. So we'll add some of that towards the top. Don't need a lot for it to work. And I think that is going to be it. I'm going to let that dry on its own. I'm not even going to use the heat gun. So I'm going to leave that to dry all by itself, au naturel, and I'll be right back. So it's been a good couple of hours and the main body of the watercolour cardstock has dried. Um, there's still some water underneath the masking tape so I'm going to be very very careful, there you go, I'm going to be very very careful to remove that because I don't really want to get any contamination back onto the watercolour cardstock. 
may be unavoidable, but I'm just going to do my best. Just try and take it off as gently as I possibly can and pull it away from there. Just grab. Just try and soak up a little bit of that water with some kitchen roll and kitchen towel. Oh, that's just a little bit, but not a lot. Let's get rid of that masking tape. Lift up the card. And just see if we can get rid of all that excess before it dribbles down onto my trousers. There we go. I think that's pretty much. It's still a bit damp around the edges, which is to be expected. So I'm just going to give that a quick blast off just to make sure it is completely dry. Love that white border. Okay, so, all dry. I've put it into my stamp um, stamp platform. It's times like this that I wish I'd actually bought a second set of the magnets so I could do both corners. I have an indigo blue script stamp so it's just kind of a random script and I've loaded it up onto the rubber side of the plate as you can see and I'm just going to turn it around and then I'm going to grab some light brown so this is going to be the tree branch archival link and I'm just going to ink the stamp up Make sure it's down. Just move that magnet up towards the top and I'm just going to stamp down just to get a little bit of that script in there. So the next time I'm going to add it down here. So of course it doesn't matter if we cross contaminate there because we're going to put it back in exactly the same position. I'm literally just going to rub the stamp over and then flip it, stamp down, like I said, doesn't matter if we don't get perfect impression. So we've got some nice kind of script going off in that background too, so done with that. So I'm happy with the background as it is at the moment. Okay, so next up I have Stampers Anonymous Classics number five. And I've got, I don't know if you can actually see that, I've got the lady stamp and I've got an eye and like the nose and the mouth from there. And I'm going to turn that back around again. I've already positioned them so I know exactly where they're going to go. This time I'm going to go a little bit darker and I've got the potting soil archival ink. And I'm going to ink up my lovely lady. And then we'll flip that round and drop it down. Now this is textured watercolour cardstock as well so I'm hoping that I'll get a decent impression off it. If I don't then that's fine. It's a bit light which means, and that's probably because I've got it right up in that corner, that I can always go back over it again if I don't think it's dark enough. And I actually think my potting soil stamp is starting to run out. It's starting to get, because I've had it for a good couple of years. Let's really add some ink up there onto that eye. Let's just flip it and go straight back down again. I 
because the beauty is I can do this as many times as I want to until I'm happy with the impression. But to be honest, I'm happy with that. Because of that blue behind that brown, it's gone slightly darker and you've got that lovely kind of colour coming in from the background through the face. And of course, it stops just nicely where that script stamp has been previously. So I think I'm done with that for the time being. Okay, so next up, I'm going to bring back that tree branch archival link and I've got the Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous Chevron stencil. And I just want to add a little bit of movement into um, the, the background just by adding a little bit of stenciling just about there, here. So I'll grab my archival link, just load up my blender, trying to make sure that the sheet is as straight as I can possibly kind of get it. So I want it about there. Without being too pedantic about it. I'm just going to very, very lightly just rub into it. Just to introduce a little bit of movement. Like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here in this corner because I think it's a little bit plain. So maybe about there. And the other thing that I'm conscious of is I don't want to get rid of that. I don't want to dirty up that beautiful kind of blue colour. And the other thing that I want to do is just bring in a little bit of movement left to right just kind of across there towards the eye just darken that up a tad like that and then I'm going to flip it and also run that across there so we have it going in two kind of different directions. You'll see why in a little while. So we've got movement going that way, up, and we've got movement going left to right, and we've also got movement going right to left. Which is cool. So I'm going to add these two bits to my art journal page, and I want them to sit within that kind of stenciling so you can see that little bit of movement that we have. Maybe I should have gone a little bit further that way but you've got movement picking it up there and you've got movement there. But these are too white for me. Far too white. So I'm just going to move that out of the way and I'm going to bring in my distressing old paper. And I'm just going to load up And I'm just going to add a little bit of grunge just over the top. And I'm aware that I'm going on to laminate with a water-based colour, but that's fine. I'm not really going to handle this much. I'm just going to dirty it down. Just get rid of a little bit of that white. Just make it look a little bit darker and a little bit more older because I think that dark brown at the edges maybe I might just do it I think that should do let's just bring that back in Yeah, it's not as dark as it could have been. 
pretty much both the same size. I've had that smaller one there to pretty much where I kind of envisaged having it anyway. I think I'm happy with that positioning, so I need to grab some glue. And I'm going to use, providing it's not gummed up on me, so it's just opening up the nozzle again. That should be okay. There we go. And I can just run a bead of that white PVA. And just drop that down like so. And then do the same thing for this one. And I can leave that now to dry because that PVA will disappear completely when that's dry. So I'm going to leave that for a bit and then I will be right back. So there all stuck down nicely. I did put something down on top just to hold them down to make sure that they didn't bubble or anything like that and they stuck nice and firmly to the back. Um, I don't want to do any more to it now. I could, at a later date, go around the word blocks with a Stabilo all pencil or a water soluble colour like blue or that kind of thing if I so choose or feel the need. But at the minute I'm quite happy with the way it looks. So all I'm going to do now is just finish it off by signing and dating and then I'm going to call this page done. And what date is it today? 22nd of January. There we go. My page complete. So it's now the next day and I've just been re-looking at the footage that I recorded yesterday when I was doing the art journal page and something just cropped into my head that I just thought that I'd like to discuss with you. Now, um, <clears throat> when you look at the page, it, it is kind of simplistic when you look at it. You've got stamping, you've got the brush your background, you've got the stenciling, and then you've got your two Tim Holtz chip quotes or whatever it is that they call them, um, just stuck down, and that's it. There are a lot of other techniques that I could have done on this art journal page. I could have layered some mark making over the top with white paint. I could have done those white splatters. I could have added book text underneath these two pieces. Um, there's a thousand and one other things that I could have done to this art journal page to just keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on and keep working at it until you know it was quite full and quite busy and all the rest of it. But one of the things that I find very difficult to understand with some people who art journal uh, and display their works on YouTube or um, Instagram that kind of stuff is that they have overworked it. Sometimes they've thrown everything they possibly can use every single technique they can think of on an art journal page but it doesn't always need it. You can have an art journal page which is quite simplistic which is quite um, just one or two layers. You don't have to have everything that you've got in your possession on one single page every single time. Um, and sometimes I think we lose track of the fact that, you know, a white page, white space with very, very little on it is just as artistic as a page that's had every product thrown at it. So I just thought I'd raise that and just reiterate, if you like, that you don't have to do the white splatters every time. You don't have to do the matte making. You don't have to do the book text. You don't have to do the matte medium. There's no matte medium on this whatsoever. There's nothing stuck down to this. It's purely pigment, paints, and ink, and those two chipboards. Nothing else. A little bit of stenciling, and that's it. There's no other layers. You can layer without having to add paper and that kind of stuff. So I just thought I would bring that 
back up again, if you like, because I haven't discussed layering and that kind of thing for quite some time. But anyway, that's enough rambling from me. Anyway, like my t-shirt. I trip myself. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels that whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you.